Having only started Kill All Games this year, I missed out on reviewing a ton of games from 2022 and 2023 as I wasn't writing for any outlets at the time. Titles such as The Talos Principle 2, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, and today's subject, Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun, were on my radar, and while I did play them, I was never able to offer up my thoughts about them. Now, this video is specifically going to be about Bolt Gun's DLC expansion, Forges of Corruption, but I will include some of my criticisms and praises for the base game, as it informs a lot of what this add-on brings to the table. If you were a fan of stomping around as an ultramarine in a world fashioned after old school aesthetics, Forges of Corruption doesn't tinker with that formula too much, if at all. In fact, it's basically like the ultimate doom adding a new episode roughly a year later that just gives you another chance to decimate Chaos Marines and Nurglings. Some subtle tweaks to level design do see me enjoying this DLC more, but it's not a radical reinvention of Rock Digital's retro FPS. While there is a basic plot for Bolt Gun Forges of Corruption, and I'm sure those deeply entrenched in Warhammer 40k's lore will appreciate it, the gist is this. After defeating the evil Tumulus Samael and purging evil from the land, Space Marine Malam Cato learns that there are forges of corruption still plaguing Gryia that need to be destroyed. He sets out to vanquish evil and end the threat of chaos once and for all, though we all know a Space Marine's battle is never truly done. This will see Malum trek across five new levels, where he'll acquire two new weapons and battle a few new foes before obliterating the titular forges. You don't really need a story to drive you with Bolt Gun, as even the base game was perfectly fine with its limited cutscenes and mostly flavor text driven plot. Much like classic shooters, Bolt Gun and its DLC work by focusing almost entirely on gameplay and giving you just a little bit of motivation to press onward. If you're expecting something more akin to Warhammer 40,000 Space Marines examination of Captain Titus, then you'll be disappointed. Build as a boomer shooter, that's actually where my first issue with Bolt Gun and by extension Forges of Corruption crops up. While some of the design philosophy here is decidedly old school, such as chasing down colored keys to open locked doors and having an arsenal of distinct and powerful weapons, most of the combat plays out like Serious Sam or Doom 2016. That's not bad, but it's absolutely not a boomer shooter. Bolt Gun also had lacking enemy variety, and its levels were ludicrously long. It was a bit absurd that a single episode of the game would take you around 3 hours to finish, not to mention the final levels of each episode boiled down to extended horde modes where you simply pelted the boss with pot shots while avoiding infinitely respawning baddies. Forges of Corruption doesn't upend that design ethos, but it does something a bit different with its level designs. The five maps in this DLC are massive, and while they still take upwards of 40 minutes to finish, the arenas are far better spread out and allow you to maneuver through them quickly. Right from the beginning area, you'll see how enemy placement could feel more scattered, as they aren't bunched up as much. There have also been general tweaks to the AI behavior from the main game, so someone like the Great Unclean One won't indefinitely spawn little nerglings, meaning you won't eventually have an arena full of 1,000 little bastards to contend with. That tweak also applies to the main game now. The levels themselves don't feel dramatically different from the base game, but it does result in an episode that feels like a proper epilogue. Everything is simply bigger, and while that should result in a disaster, the pacing of the levels actually feels better. There are more defined moments where the locked in arenas occur, and you could get away from a greater number of battles than in the main campaign if you stick to the core objective. It's refreshing after becoming exhausted with the original levels. Still, this DLC clocks in at around two and a half hours to finish, which is incredibly long for just five levels, and it's not like the final boss fight is any more interesting than in the main game. It's just another Icon of Sin styled horde rush where you have to take out greater demonic forces before blasting centralized crystals. One of my other issues with Bolt Gun was with regard to its arsenal. While every gun was great and not a single one felt weak, the titular Bolt Gun was so ridiculously good that it often wound up being the best option for each encounter. Forges of Corruption does fix this a little, as it introduces both a heavy version of the Melta Gun and a rocket launcher. The Grav Cannon is still your BFG-like go-to for demolishing bosses, but being able to one-shot Chaos Marines or Pink Horrors with a missile makes combat feel quicker. It's also nice to decimate aspiring champions and prevent them from respawning, as those bastards still suck. There are definitely periods in this DLC where you'll be sticking almost exclusively with the bolt gun, but mixing up the general order of enemies and introducing guns at a faster cadence does help guide you with approaching fights differently. 
Any of the other changes this DLC brings, however, are in the form of a patch for the base game. It's funny how, despite having boss fights that felt like horde modes, the main game didn't actually launch with a horde mode. That has been rectified, and while I appreciate its inclusion, the mode is bafflingly basic. You get a single arena and four difficulty options, but that's it. There are no modifiers for tweaking enemy patterns or restricting weapon usage, though I suppose you could do that last one yourself. Once you hit the final wave too, the mode's over. If you're not constantly dying, horde mode will last about 30 minutes, and while it's fine, the excessive amount of viscera left over from foes actually begins to obscure your sight by the end. The honest to god biggest change the DLC patch brings is a navigation line for the campaign maps. While I didn't have a problem finishing Bolt Gun without a map, there are a few segments where basic progression can feel obtuse. Now you could press a button and a dotted line will show up to guide you. That does help cut down on the time wasting that can occur when you're traversing similar looking corridors, and the best part is that it's entirely optional. The game never forces it on you, and while your servo skull companion does chime in with a suggestion of seeking navigation, you can just ignore him. Apart from that though, Bolt Gun Forges of Corruption is simply more Bolt Gun with slight refinement. It's entirely possible I enjoyed this DLC more than the base game because my expectations were in check, but it does round out the arsenal and enemy roster from the original with careful additions. It's not an earth-shattering expansion by any means, and it doesn't change my overall impression of Bolt Gun, but I liked it well enough. If nothing else, the DLC does have me excited about the prospect of a sequel, or even just an update with co-op mode.